I'm going to go through uh, just a few things to keep in mind for uh, US uh, sorry UK university systems. There's a there's a lot to consider, uh, and it's it's good to do as much research as pos as possible along the way. Um, the, the more forward planning we are with these things, the more options we have, so it doesn't feel like a forced decision, and more so about uh, doing something that that is uh, well thought out. So. Um, the uh, university application team is where I'm going to start. It's, it's really important to, to understand and, and, and be reassured that, that you're not on your own uh, when you're making this decision. Uh, it's important to build a team around you. Uh, obviously, the student at the center of it, but the parents and family and friends should be part of that, that decision as well. Uh, maybe not necessarily the decision, but the advice that's around it. Um, the teachers, uh, your subject teachers and the teachers around you, like form tutors, are also fantastic for advice. Uh, impartial advice who will kind of give you uh, some guidance from their own experience and thinking about you know them knowing the students themselves uh, myself and our careers advisor Tracy uh, Tracy Fleming will be also available to to kind of talk things through there are also outside agencies uh, that sometimes are uh, that students and families utilize and that's uh, that's absolutely up to them what I would say is if you are using an outside agency it's important for them to be in touch with us so that we can all have that unified kind of approach to uh, to, to the, the kind of future plan for, for the student. So um, we want to uh, build a successful university plan. So you have to work together, of course, uh, listen to each other, share through the, uh, the work and the responsibility because an application uh, for university is not something that, that is uh, relatively easy. It takes uh, some thought, it takes some time. Uh, so you want to kind of share that around so that it's done in the right way. Uh, it can be uh, a bit of a, an anxious kind of experience as well. So being able to know that you have that reassurance is important to, to, to allow everyone to contribute in some way and be part of the plan. Uh, and it's important to consider what the family plan is because it is essentially a family decision, uh, particularly being over here in the UAE, a lot of the time going to a different country is a big decision. Uh, and you wanna make sure that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's well thought out and everyone is in support of that decision. Uh, consider all of the variables and I'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, and kind of order the different variables according to importance, because there are so many factors to consider, but everyone's different in terms of what the, what's going to be important for them. Uh, so you want to do as much research and uh, work with the team to, to, to make sure you have everything in place. So strategize and prioritize. As I mentioned, there's so many different factors. Um, you could think about the course itself, you know, what, what the course is that you're, you're considering, how that's broken down, the time taken for that course, uh, the, the type of learning experiences, a lot of universities uh, have a big emphasis on research, which is fantastic, uh, where that course is going to take you in terms of employability. Thinking about location, that's also important to, to bear in mind as well. Um, you know, there's, um, there's, there's, uh, there's a big focus on uh, have uh, the right level of support around you. So if you're going to a different country, it'd be helpful to know that you have a family member close by to to kind of look after and look out for that person thinking about if it's a large city or a town the climate where there's a big thing to consider uh, especially going from such a hot place like Dubai uh, thinking about the other goals uh, graduation and thinking about employability after in terms of being able to stay in that country um, the culture of the campus as well there's different types of universities there's there's ones where you're on a campus there's ones that are in the middle of a city um, and considering the context of that campus, you know, the ethnicity, the percentage of international students uh, and the society that is kind of in that in that campus, thinking about activities that you might do outside of the, the studies that you might normally be uh, pursuing. Uh, finances as well is really important to, to think about. Uh, and if there's an opportunity for any scholarships or financial aid, that might be worth considering. Um, and obviously finishing off with the university itself, the, the reputation, um, whether it fits uh, the learning style, where that sits in terms of the perception to employers uh, and, and, and the advantages and, and disadvantages of the, the different sizes of universities. So for this session, what I want to do is get you to think about these few things. Think about why considering university, uh, what, what to consider before applying, and then what to consider when actually making that application and the next steps moving forward from this session. So um, in terms of why considering university, there's obviously the long-term financial gains. Statistically, having um, a, a, a graduation from university puts you in a place where you're going to earn more uh, and earn at a better rate. 
Um, obviously for the academic reasons as well. It's uh, probably the last opportunity to study something for the sake of studying it. I, I really enjoyed uh, my, my experience at university studying chemistry. And uh, even though I'm not necessarily doing a career in chemistry, I loved finding out about it and giving myself the transferable skills to do something different. Um, it opens up lots of opportunities, not just in terms of your degree, but also the uh, the societies, the uh, the extracurricular activities and the connections that you'll make with people, which are uh, lifelong. Um, and it gives you some time to consider if you're not sure about your career path straight away. Um, so um, nowadays it is getting more competitive as well. So it's important to consider the fact that uh, to get into a job, um, it's going to be very, uh, very much so reliant on the qualifications that you have and not having a degree can put you in a uh, in an awkward spot to, to be eligible for, for certain positions. Um, and uh, the other thing is, is, even if you're unsure about university, it's good to apply anyway, so at least you have the option uh, and it's better to go to have an offer and then say, I don't want to do it, as opposed to deciding last minute and doing that in a panic. So uh, what you should consider before university, uh, location, 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 it's definitely important to think about where you're doing this. You wanna make sure that you have the family support, uh, it might be worth considering whether it's an opportunity for some independence. I know that I definitely benefited from that. Being an only child, I was used to having everything done for me. Uh, so it was a, it was a, a daunting uh, and scary experience going into university and having to do my own laundry and finance and all of the things that, that, that were kind of what, that I took for granted. So um, it's important to think about where. Um, also, thinking about the course itself uh, and uh, the essential subjects for those courses, you know, making sure that that you are eligible to apply for those courses. And these are a few over here and I have a few more uh, beyond that. And as you can see, there are some subjects uh, that require specific uh, A-level courses or B-Tech courses to get you on uh, to, the, to the desired kind of pathway that you're looking into. Um, it's also important to think about the quality and reputation of the university. So there are uh, there are university league, league tables, uh, but it is important to remember that they are not the, the be all and end all. It's important to think about the, the bigger picture as well and lots of other factors. Think about what universities uh, or how they're seen by students, because being a student in there, you might have a different perception of, uh, of the experience that you're having. Uh, we have a wonderful subscription to Unifrog, which I'll talk about later as well. And that's, that's a good way of finding out about life on campus or in that university. Um, yeah, um, it's also important to consider the, um, the grades that you might require to be able to get onto a course. I'm thinking about the UK, uh, there is a UCAS tariff. Each, each A-level or AS or BTEC uh, or other qualification equates to a certain number of points. Uh, uh, and those points are, uh, are added together depending on what grades you get. And there are entry requirements for, for universities depending on the course, the university and uh, the level of competition essentially. Um, there are different types of universities, as I've mentioned. Uh, when you're thinking about that, you might want to consider the accommodation as well. Some universities have fantastic halls of residences. Others uh, might require that you kind of find something privately in terms of accommodation where you're going to uh, stay and, and organize that yourself. Um, and that might be different for international students and domestic students as well. So important to do that research in that. Um, uh, and then thinking about the gender and age split. Uh, and how that fits in with, with the student going in. So I spoke about university rankings, but there's also uh, the teaching excellence framework, which is specific to the UK. It is uh, a fantastic way of, of understanding the, the quality of teaching uh, at specific universities. Uh, and there's three different rankings. There's gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, and it's really easy to find. You can go on the internet and search the teaching uh, um, excellence framework and see what the, uh, the listings or the ratings are for universities. Uh, and they get updated every year. So it's, uh, it's nice to know about the, the quality of, of the, the learning experience. Uh, when you're thinking about courses, it's also important to think about the, uh, uh, the breakdown of that course. Uh, a lot of universities now are offering possible uh, opportunities to work in, in industry in the middle of that course or work abroad. Uh, I had some friends who studied um, English and German and then in their third year they went over to Germany and studied uh, for a year in, in Berlin and then came back and finished their final year back in, back in university in the UK. Uh, in a similar way, uh, I, I also am aware of students who are studying engineering uh, who also do a, a year in industry uh, and it's fantastic because it really does help with employability later uh, to have that under your belt. Uh, it is important to also 
consider the other options as well. There are degree apprenticeships, which is uh, uh, something that is growing in the UK, uh, which allows students to get straight into work, but also have uh, a qualification at the end of it. They are very specific to uh, the, the needs in terms of industry that, or jobs that are kind of required in, in the UK, uh, but they're all available in terms of registering for those in UCAS. And we've got our students in year 12 already registered so they can, they can explore the, the different options there. Uh, when you apply to university in the UK, uh, I know I've mentioned this, uh, you use a website called UCAS. Uh, with UCAS, you are only allowed five choices. So you want to make sure you're making those uh, choices as, uh, as strategic as possible. Um, if you're considering Oxford or Cambridge, you can only apply for one of those two. Uh, if you're applying for medicine, you're only allowed to apply for four medicine courses. So the other one could be uh, for something that's non-medical. Uh, um, you might consider um, applying at the same university for different courses as well. And that's, that's also something that's possible. But what you want to do is, is end up in a place where you have a, a selection of offers uh, to take you further. So, so it's, it's important to think carefully about those, those options. You don't want to go straight for the most high level universities and, and end up with lots of high level offers. And then just in case that doesn't work out, have nothing to choose. You want to spread that around. So you have some of the uh, universities that have more accessible grades uh, and on the flip side, some, some universities that are pretty aspirational so that you have a mix of everything. Um, there are also uh, an early applicant, or there is actually an early applicant group. If you're considering Oxford or Cambridge, if you're considering medicine, veterinary science, dentistry, uh, or even some optometry courses, uh, that uh, application group will, will send the application slightly earlier. And I'll show a timeline in a moment so you can see how that's going to spread out. Um, when you apply, it's based on predicted grades. So the schools um, or the school will uh, set some predicted grades based on performance in school. Uh, and actually the year 12 teachers are doing that at the moment uh, so that we're in a good place for after the summer holidays when, when the applications start to go out. Uh, some courses require entrance examinations. For instance, if you're considering um, uh, medicine, you'd need to do either the, uh, the, the BMAT or the UCAT. Uh, if you're thinking about uh, law, there is also an entrance exam called the LNAT, uh, which is looking at your English skills and your, your, your ability to justify a, an argument of some sort. Um, when you apply, you also fill out um, a, a personal statement. Uh, the personal statement is, is a way for you to, to sell yourself, to show all of the wonderful skills that you've, uh, you've generated along the way, all the wonderful experience and how that's going to make you uh, the best candidate for, um, for, for the course, for the university, for the wider community in that, in that university. The school also provide a reference as well. Uh, and that's accumulated from the subject teachers who put in their individual parts and that's kind of uh, putting together as one comprehensive uh, reference from the form tutor. Um, some universities also uh, have interviews or they might ask for a portfolio depending on the course. Uh, so uh, there, are, there are sometimes some individual ho hoops that you need to jump through at, at certain universities. So here's the timeline. Um, this is the timeline for the 2022 application. So for the parents who are year 11 parents, this is going to be slightly different, but also similar. Actually, the dates don't tend to change very much. Uh, so for our current year 12s, the undergraduate um, application system is open now. It opened on the 18th of May. Uh, every single student has been given or has created a UCAS login uh, and it's connected to the school. Uh, so they can now go in and explore uh, all of the wonderful courses that are going to be available for them. Uh, they're able to start entering their own personal information. Uh, and students have made their first draft of their personal statement as well. So and they've been given some feedback on that. So. Uh, they're hopefully working on that and making that the best that it can be. Uh, and on the 7th of September is the first day that UCAS can receive a completed application. That doesn't mean that they should send it off by the 7th of September, but that's when the applications are starting to be received. Um, and then on the 15th of October is the early application deadline. Uh, and that's when, um, as I mentioned, those, those specific courses will send off their applications. Um, and then by January is the equal consideration application deadline. So by January, everyone would have submitted their applications for UK universities. Uh, and then in February, UCAS Extra opens, which is a function where students can go in and track their offers uh, and uh, just keep an eye on all the, uh, all the different communication that will come through from universities. Uh, and then they would be able to, or they have the opportunity to accept certain offers or, or reject them. Uh, how it works at the moment is, is that they can accept two offers 
One of them will be their firm decision and one of them will be their insurance. The firm one is the one that they confidently want to go to and that will be the one with the higher grade requirements. And if they miss those grades, unfortunately, uh, or God forbid, if they miss those grades, then the insurance will be their backup option. And that one has to be something with lower grades because otherwise there'd be no point in leaving that as an insurance. So, um, so thinking about what to do in terms of making an application. So registering the UCAS Hub, all of our students in year 12 have done that already. Uh, they've made a username and password. They've used a personal email address uh, because uh, when they leave year 13, the school email addresses get cut off at a certain point. So it's important that they have their personal email address so they can continue getting that correspondence from universities in terms of offers. Uh, so they can make those five choices. Um, it's four choices if it's medicine or dentistry or veterinary science. Um, they can't apply for both Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, and the application process is uh, £22 if you would like to go for one choice or £26.50 to go for five choices. And that sounds like a bargain to me as a maths teacher. Um, uh, you, 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 can, you have to apply by the equal consideration date. Um, and provide, providers, the universities can't see what applicants have chosen in terms of other universities. So if, for instance, you've applied to UCL, Warwick, uh, Bristol and Cambridge, the person who's uh, from Warwick will not be able to see that you've applied to the other universities. All they'll see is the application to their own university. So um, sections to be completed. So students should, in year 12, should be able to go in now and fill in their personal details, uh, their contact details, residency, uh, work experience, education, nationality, and all of those, those major bits of information that, that they should know about themselves. Um, and then the references and things like that will be from, uh, from the school. Uh, and we would kind of submit that at the right time. Um, so the personal statement is, is something that I wanted to spend a little bit of time on because that was something that um, that's essentially the only or the biggest thing that, uh, that students can do to sell themselves. Not every university does an interview. So in some ways, this is their interview. These, this is their opportunity to say all of the wonderful things about themselves. Um, universities obviously receive lots and lots of uh, applications and personal statements, so you want to make sure that it stands out and is unique. Uh, so this is the section that students have full control over. Uh, students, um, it's their only chance to market themselves individually, uh, and it's the same for all choices, so they'll have one personal statement for every single option that they've chosen. It's a maximum of 4,000 characters or 47 lines, uh, and a minimum of 1,000 characters there isn't a spelling or grammar check, so you need to make sure that's on point uh, and no formatting is allowed. So there's no bold or italics or highlighting. It has to be just continuous prose in paragraphs. Um, good point to kind of uh, make students aware of, not that I'm worried about it, but there is a UCAS similarity detection service. Every personal statement is run through software to check for plagiarism, and that would definitely have a detrimental effect to, to anyone's application if they did uh, use inspiration a bit too closely from someone else's personal statement. So important to keep in mind. Um, so um, students will go through that application process. Uh, and I, I suppose I've spoken about this already. Uh, but the teachers uh, part, which I haven't spoken as much about, I suppose will, uh, will give as much guidance as possible in terms of personal statements and the application process. Uh, there will be um, uh, their input in terms of their references I spoke about uh, and their predicted grades. When it comes to predicted grades, we want to do the best thing for our students, uh, which is giving the most realistic prediction for their grades. Uh, giving inflated grades uh, ultimately ends in disappointment for the student because they might not get the offer that they, they would have hoped for. And also it does affect our credibility in terms of uh, promoting or giving, uh, giving reliable grades, uh, particularly for those Russell Group and, uh, and, and universities like Oxford and Cambridge. So replies to offers. Uh, I know I spoke about this uh, briefly. Uh, students make uh, will have to choose or uh, hold on to a maximum of two offers. One's firm uh, and one's the insurance. Uh, the insurance is, as I said, a backup if they don't get into their firm choice. Uh, they must then decline or any of the other remaining offers. So once all decisions and, and replies have been made, if students aren't holding an offer, they'll be able to use extra or clearing to find available places. So if, God forbid, they weren't successful in their firm or insurance offers, uh, they would still have the opportunity uh, to, to go in via clearing with the grades that they do have. Um, some people might have been aware about some of the information on the news about uh, this system changing. 
I don't suspect it's going to change for our current year 12s or even our current year 11s yet, but they are talking about a post-grade system where the offers will be given after students acquire those grades, but that's nothing that's going to affect us just yet. It's all uh, talk in the pipelines at the moment. So what to do now? Um, right now, it's really, really important to do as much research as possible. Uh, find out about all of the various universities, uh, about the different courses, about yourselves, uh, to see what's the right fit for you. Uh, it is a very uncertain time. It is a time when uh, there are lots of questions about what to do. Uh, but as a point of reassurance, there's nothing wrong with making a decision, choosing a path, and then changing your mind on it. I know I've spoken to lots of students about this before, but from my own personal journey, I started off thinking that I wanted to do a career in finance, uh, and that definitely wasn't the right fit for me. I couldn't see myself uh, pushing a nine to five desk. I really wanted the interaction. So uh, I changed over to a degree in chemistry, uh, which was fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, but then again, I didn't want to pursue a career in a lab uh, and uh, teaching was definitely where my, 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 my uh, passions lied. It was actually in my third year of university that I did uh, something called a student associate scheme uh, where I had a placement in a school uh, to uh, teach chemistry. Uh, and I quickly realized that teaching uh, 30 students with Bunsen burners was not a good mix for me. Uh, but when I was doing a pupil pursuit, I saw a, a maths lesson and I knew that was the right choice for me. Uh, but the reason why I'm saying that is because it's okay to change your mind. There's nothing wrong with having a decision or having a pathway and then, and then altering that route. And I think that's probably what a lot of our parents here tonight would probably agree with. And they probably had a similar journey themselves where they've wanted to do something and ended up in a different place. Uh, so as much research as possible. Uh, in terms of application, you want to build as many extracurricular activities as possible. Now, that's really difficult this year, obviously, because of uh, the, the pandemic and various restrictions. But we are very fortunate in the sense that universities are eager to, uh, to, to offer out as many experience days as possible or experience activities or webinars. Uh, Unifrog has a, a multitude of MOOCs, which are online courses that students can, can pursue. Uh, and it's a great way to to show the genuine passion that you might have for a course. Um, work experience, again, UAE is, a, is an awkward place to, to be able to do that, but it is worth considering if, if you do have a relative in a, in a workplace who might be able to get you uh, involved in some way, that's really good. Um, even if it's something virtual or something uh, in a different country, it's, it's, worth, it's worth considering. Uh, we recently had our, our virtual uni fair, uni fair, the first ever one, and actually I had the, the, the privilege of talking to lots of universities myself in the process. One of the biggest things that shone through uh, for UK universities in particular, uh, which is probably different to, to other systems, was the massive, massive, massive emphasis on students showing their genuine passion for the subject. Uh, when when uh, universities say that they're looking for a student who's the right fit for the university, they're thinking about obviously the wider community being part of that um, that that environment and, and making sure that that atmosphere is something that's productive and, and self perpetuating. But the biggest thing they want to know is is if students have a genuine genuine passion for the subject and 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 how that makes them feel and how they want to use that to 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 make some sort of a change in the world. Uh, and that sounds very cheesy, doesn't necessarily mean that you want to, uh, I don't know, uh, save some dolphins. It is, it's more about having the, uh, the, the opportunity to make an impact with, with the knowledge that you want to gain from it. Uh, really important, of course, to focus on studies because uh, naturally at this stage of students' lives, it is about the attainment, the grades that they get. Um, when universities are under the pump and they have uh, pressure of time, uh, they are going to be looking to reduce that list uh, of applicants. Uh, and, and the easiest way to filter that down is by looking at grades. So it's really, really important that students are aiming to get the best grades possible uh, in that process. So um, a good way to do research is definitely Unifrog. Uh, that's something that all students have access to. Uh, it's a fantastic way of shortlisting universities. Uh, and then once you've shortlisted those universities, you can go in and look at the profile of the university, thinking about the courses, thinking about entry requirements, what grades do you need, what other assessments are important, what's the university like, and all of those things that I mentioned in um, the other slide earlier about strategizing and prioritizing. Um, it also has lots of advice about essays uh, and how to, how to improve the, the personal statement and enhance it to, to the best level possible. 
Um, that's that's a really big point that, that Unifrog really does well in, uh, and especially when they're thinking about specific subjects or specific courses. Uh, they also have a fantastic self-reflective uh, tool on competencies. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, when you're applying to university, you want to show off all of those wonderful transferable skills. Uh, those transferable skills are, are not just about uh, being able to work hard or being able to kind of understand an abstract concept. It is also about the uh, the life skills that are really important in, in, in the work environment and when working with others, the collaboration, the systems that you might have in, pro, in place uh, that are kind of linked with VESPA. Uh, and Unifrog really breaks it down in a nice way into various competencies. Uh, and students have the opportunity to reflect on their competencies and then type out some examples of when they've demonstrated those competencies. And the reason for doing that is then it gives you some things to talk about in your personal statement. Uh, when we spoke earlier about, uh, well, when I spoke earlier about, you know, making sure that you have those uh, experiences, thinking about ECAs and, and, and job opportunities or uh, finding out about courses or that genuine passion, it's not just about talking about those in the personal statement, it's about being able to show what the impact is of doing that. What have you learned from that and how are you gonna use that to, to go further? And then my last slide over here is just a few useful websites. So I mentioned UCAS and Unifrog. There are some uni stats um, available on uh, the government websites. Uh, there's also lots of open days to, to kind of utilize. And obviously you can't necessarily physically go there, but now there's lots, lots and lots of uh, virtual open days to, to, to utilize. Uh, I had a parent mention about uh, student finance because we have some uh, UK citizens who are obviously not residents. There are ways to, to, to kind of secure that home fee status. There was a webinar that was done uh, at the start of this year uh, by um, uh, an external company. And if anyone is interested, I'm happy to, to get you in touch with that person because they can kind of look at your profile and, and talk about how you can build that eligibility uh, to make sure that you are uh, acquiring that home fee status if you, if you require it or if you're looking for it. Um, the other thing to, to keep in mind uh, when I'm looking at useful websites is also uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, for students, I am very much um, always uh, sharing the, uh, the, the wonderful opportunities that are around. If a university is having a, a, an event, I'll be quick to kind of share that in the Microsoft Teams. Uh, for year 12 in particular, and I'm going to start to do it with year 11 now that they are kind of transitioning into sixth form. So whenever possible, it's good to kind of click on uh, and sign up for some of those webinars. Uh, most of them are really good, some of them aren't great, uh, so it'd be good to have as much feedback as possible because the ones that aren't great, uh, I won't push forward and I won't promote as much, and the ones that are, I'll really promote and I'll reach out to them to make sure that they give us more opportunities to, to have that interaction. Uh, 